What would you do to get the boy or girl you like to like you back? How far would you go? Would you kill someone? Would you even eat someone? Hello everyone, I'm Shaggy, celebrating the month of October with a spooky story. I've loved the horror genre my entire life, reading Goosebumps and watching Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees since elementary school. And over time, I've combined my love of all things scary with my love for anime and manga, and I have read quite a few horror manga. Not all good, to be honest, but not all bad either. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the good ones, a story called School Ningyo, or School Mermaid, by Yoshitomi Akihito. I think you'll enjoy it. First, credit where credit's due, this was scanlated by a group called Strays, many years ago. And while what I'm going to be talked about today is a contained story, it's actually only the beginning. But more on that later. Let's jump into the story first. School Ningyo starts with Haruko and Yoshiko shopping together. They've each told their parents that they're going to stay at the other's house, classic, right? So that they can visit school after dark. While cleaning at the school, they had found a notebook saying that mermaids appear in the school's pool at night, and if you eat the flesh of one of these mermaids, your love will come true. Now, this is definitely a new take, but eating a mermaid's flesh is a rather old idea in Japanese folklore. Typically, it's believed that eating the flesh of a mermaid will grant a person immortality, as seen in Rumiko Takahashi's Mermaid Saga. Here, it just makes someone fall in love with you. Kinda sounds like a ripoff. By the way, the history of mermaids, or ningyo, in Japanese folklore is incredibly interesting, so if you want, just pull up the Wikipedia page for ningyo and have a look. There's a ton of really cool info there. Before Haruko and Yoshiko start their hunt, they discuss a missing girl from their class, Uhara, and a page torn out from the mermaid notebook hypothesizing that the girl might have tried to catch a mermaid and failed, and that the torn out page might have information about what had happened. But these girls are determined to do what they came here to do, so they chant a spell written in the notebook that's supposed to make the mermaids appear, but are surprised when they don't see any. Until Yoshiko notices a figure inside the school. Once inside, Yoshiko sees the mermaid. Teenage girls in school swimsuits, some of them floating in the wall and floor. Bewildered but undeterred, these creatures are swimming through walls after all. The girls chase the mermaids, trying to catch specific ones. You see, each mermaid has a letter on the front of its swimsuit, and you have to eat the flesh of the mermaid whose letter matches the first name of the boy you want to fall in love with you. As if catching, killing, and eating one of these mermaids was too simple a task. The pair have no luck catching any of the mermaids, however, as they swim through the floor and walls, their theatrical and fluid movements making it seem like they're just having fun. When Yoshiko gets pulled through the floor, coughing up water in a great supernatural touch, she decides she is done. She's going to get the hell out of there. Until she sees a lone mermaid she recognizes. It's Ohara, the girl that had disappeared. But why? How? Haruko shows up to explain things. Having heard the rumor about the mermaids in the pool, which was something just going around the school, apparently, she kept coming to the school at night but never saw any mermaids. Until one night, she saw Ohara with the notebook. Ohara chanted the spell and ran around the school, hunting something Haruko couldn't see. Come sunup, Ohara disappeared and only the notebook was left. It turns out that Haruko hid the notebook where she and Yoshiko later found it, so the two girls could take on this mermaid murder task together. Haruko also ripped the page out of the notebook that explained that if you do not eat a mermaid's flesh before sunrise, then you become a mermaid yourself. No wonder they all look like teenage girls. Haruko kills Ohara and offers some of the mermaid flesh to Yoshiko, but she doesn't take her up on it. Probably too traumatized by seeing a girl she went to school with being beaten to death with the crowbar. And as Haruko is cutting off some meat to eat, 
she tells Yoshiko that this isn't her first rodeo. She actually has a current boyfriend because last time she did this mermaid hunt, she had to eat what she could get because the mermaids with the letter T were too fast for her. And again, she's failed to get a T mermaid, the kind she wants, because Yoshiko was too slow to be of any help. Thankfully, next time it'll be easier, because since the sun has come up and Yoshiko hasn't eaten any mermaid flesh, she is taken by the mermaids to become one of them. And Yoshiko's full name is Tanaguchi Yoshiko, so she'll become a tea mermaid. One Haruko can easily catch. I really like this story. It's simple, basically just a setting and a hook. At school, after dark, hunting mermaids in order to get a boy to like you. It's not a unique idea, but it combines several common ideas to create something that is unique. Same with the betrayal at the end. It's a common twist in horror stories, but it's still effective. Because we don't get much characterization throughout the story, we don't suspect Haruko's intentions and don't see her betrayal coming. So it uses the short nature of this work to its advantage. The mermaids are also very interesting creatures. They look like regular humans, including the standard school swimsuits they wear, so the idea of killing and eating them is disconcerting, at best. Combined with their ability to swim through walls and floors as if it's water, and the theatrical way they move, it creates a juxtaposition between the normal and the abnormal. This is increased by their behavior. They don't look or act ferocious or hostile, and like I said earlier, they even seem to be having fun, just playing in the strange water world they inhabit. Their lack of speech, and perhaps intelligence, adds to their harmless nature, and it makes the idea of killing and eating them very savage. How cruel would a person have to be to see these creatures, especially after realizing that some of them are your former classmates, and still be willing to murder them? And that shows another element of horror present in this story. The notebook has a spell to summon the mermaids, and what you get if you succeed in eating one. But because of Haruko, it doesn't have the warning about becoming one if you fail. So Yoshiko doesn't have any clue that the mermaids include students like her, or that she might become one of them. She doesn't know what's awaiting her at all. She doesn't know before starting that there is no stopping. She's completely blindsided, and that's just how Haruko wanted it. The mermaids in this story aren't monsters. People are. Again, it's not the most unique idea in the world, but still a very well done one. Now for some interesting info about this series. School Ningyo actually started as these three chapters, about 64 pages altogether, telling this story of Haruko and Yoshiko. Later, the author added more chapters, telling more stories around the same premise, but with different characters, finally spanning 32 chapters collected in five volumes. These additional chapters tell more stories, but also shed light on this mysterious phenomenon and its origins. I'd love to cover these stories, so if you want me to talk about them, leave a comment saying so. You can also like the video so I know people enjoy what I'm doing. What's your favorite horror manga? Or maybe one you think doesn't get enough love? I've got a couple more up my sleeve that aren't so well known nowadays, and I'm hoping to get to them sooner rather than later, but I'd always love more suggestions. If you like this video, please subscribe to see other videos of mine, and of course turn on notifications to see when I release a new video. I don't have a schedule at all yet, so that could be very useful, as YouTube is kind of random with recommending things. Now, if you want to see more horror content from me, check out my videos about Junji Ito's Remina and Hidashi Hino's Lullaby from Hell. Or maybe my review of Parasite Eve, the original novel that inspired the video game series. You can find me on Twitter, and I have a Patreon if anybody wants to support me in my endeavors. They're both Shaggy Jeebus, and links are in the description. Thank you ahead of time if you visit me on either. Until next time... Stay safe, stay warm, 
and stay away from mermaids. They may not be as friendly as you think.